divergence theorem example. This is going to be part one. I'm going to actually do this twice. So the first time I have a vector field, F, that I made up. I have a region of space, which I made up, but it's pretty easy to pick. And what I want to do is to show that both sides of the divergence theorem are equivalent in this example. Uh, and so I'm not going to derive the divergence theorem. I'm just going to use it. And I think, you know, when you use a function, uh, use a theorem like this, it kind of helps you understand what's going on, even if you don't derive it. Um, so this is part one. I'm going to do this uh, analytically on paper, and then I'm going to do it numerically in Python in part two. So if you want part two, it will be down below at some point after I finish it. I'm not going to make it there before. Okay, so let's just go over the divergence theorem. This says that a surface flux of some function. So the flux is uh, in essentially how much of that field crosses through some surface, but this has to be a closed surface actually. I should put closed right there because it's closed. A closed surface area flux uh, of some function, f, vector function. And so in this expression, f is a function, n hat is the unit vector perpendicular to the surface. So if I have a cube like this, I'm gonna have six different n hats. Each side is going to have a different n hat vector, right? Up here, n hat's in the positive y direction. Right here, it's in the positive x. Right here, it's in the positive z, and so forth. Over on the back side, it's in the negative z, so you get the idea. So I take the dot product between this vector function and that, and then I do a surface integral over that area. And so I'm using a cube here, uh, which is a pain because we have six sides, so we have to do six surface integrals. Uh, but it's easy to imagine what's going on. So that's the flux over the whole surface. And that's going to be equal to a volume integral over the whole same surface bounded by that curve of the diverge of del dot f. So del, I should write that down. Del is the operator, vector operator in Cartesian coordinates, the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z. So if I take that dot that, I get a scalar function, and then I can integrate that scalar function over the volume. And again, in a cube, the volume integral is actually really easy. Uh, the surface integral is easy, too. That just turns into six parts. All right. So I kind of, I made a little, a little prop here. Let's see, z equals 1, y equals, that's like that. So here's my prop so we can look at all the different sides. Uh, and I'm going to label them. Let's just label them this way. So I can, I can say uh, 1, that's the x, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go around that way. And then this top side, y equals 1, is going to be equal to 5. And the bottom one, y is equal to 0, is going to be 6. And I'm going to keep this on here just so we can see which, which number that we're on. Uh, and I, it could be like a die. You could roll it. I should have done that. Well, anyway, so I'm just going to uh, put the one up that I'm on so you know which, which side I'm on. So let's do z equals 1. So that's this surface right over here. So let's say phi, I'm going to call this phi uh, 1. And then once I find the flux for each side, I add them all up, and that's my total. So phi 1, just so you know, uh, z on that whole side, z is constant. z is a constant 1. And n hat is going to be the vector 0, 0, 1. So the, in the unit vector in the z direction. So now I can find f dot n hat. First of all, I only get the z components, which is just that. Second of all, the z value is 1. So f dot n hat is going to be 1 minus 2y. Now I can integrate. So phi 1 is going to be the double integral. I'm going to integrate from uh, along x equals 0 to 1, y equals 0 to 1. Because right, I'm on this surface right here. So I need to uh, do the surface integral right here so I can add up in the, uh, the y direction and add up in the x direction. So I have a double integral. And then I have my function, 1 minus 2y, uh, dx dy. So let's just do the x first. It doesn't really matter which one you do. If I integrate this uh, over x, there's no x's in there, so I get uh, 1 dx integral. It's going to be x and then negative 2x also. So I, I'm going to actually write this as uh, y equals 0 to 1 of x times 1 minus 2y. And then I have to evaluate that at 0 and 1 before I do the next integral. 
because that's my limits of integration. And so you see here that I get one and the other one's zero, so I just get one minus two y. So it's just gonna be equal to the integral from zero to one, one minus two, one minus two y dy. And that's pretty easy to integrate. I get y minus y squared, because that's gonna be raised to the power of two divided by two, that's over there. And that's gonna be uh, zero to one, so it's just gonna be one minus one equals zero. And that's phi one. Okay, we got more, we got five more to do and then a volume integral. Okay, so let's do phi two, which is right there. That's x equals one, so that's this surface right there. So phi two, um, I'm gonna put an arrow. So x equals one, n hat equals uh, the vector one, zero, zero. So in that case, I only have uh, my function f dot n hat, it's just gonna be y, right? Because I have x is equal to one and then all these terms have are dotted into a zero. So that means I can integrate phi two, it's gonna be the integral from y equals zero to one, z equals zero to one, uh, y, dy, dz. So let's do the y integral first. I'm gonna get uh, z, let's leave that z, I get y squared over two from zero to one dz, and I evaluate the limits, I get uh, one half minus zero, so just one half, so I get integral over zero, one half dz, and if I integrate that, I get one half z from zero to one is one half equals phi two. Okay, phi three. So looking over here, my cube, we're here at z equals zero. So z equals zero n hat would be negative, or it's actually gonna be the vector zero, neg zero, negative one, because it's in the z direction. Okay, so if I go over here, f dot n hat, it's just gonna be this component, but z is equal to zero, so I just get negative two y. Negative two y. Yeah. Okay, so now I get the double integral phi three equals the double integral from x equals zero to one, y equals zero to one, negative two y dx dy. And I'm gonna skip a step here, but there's no x in there and I'm going from zero to one, so I just get negative two y dy. So I get uh, zero to one, negative two y dy, because the x was just add x and go zero to one. And then this is just gonna be equal to uh, negative y squared over two, no, it's y squared from zero to one, so negative one equals phi three, negative one. Okay, phi four. So we're over, let's see, so I did one, two, three, four, so we're at x equals zero. x equals zero n hat is equal to uh, negative one, zero, zero. That's on the opposite side of that, that thing. So f dot n hat, looking at my function here, is this gonna be this, but x is equal to zero, right? So f dot n hat is gonna be zero. That's kinda cool, that makes things easy. So phi four is gonna be the double integral of zero dy dz, and that's zero, I mean, is that okay? I think, hopefully that's okay. That should be okay, right? I mean, it's zero. That's easy. Okay, so that's five, four. We got two more to do. Okay, five, five. That's fun to say. Um, hopefully I can fit it on the same paper. So now we'll flip up here to that top one where y is equal to one. Uh, so I'm gonna say y equals to one. N hat is gonna be zero, one, zero. Right, it's on the, we're up here on the top of that thing. So y hat is that, n hat's in the y direction. So now I can say f dot n hat is gonna be equal to just this, and y is equal to one, but it doesn't really matter. So I get two 
x, z. And so phi 5 is going to be equal to the double integral x equals 0, z equals 0, 1, 1, 2 x z dx dz. And I'm not going to integrate that because let's do phi 6 real quick. And so over here, that's this bottom side where y is equal to 0. And n hat is equal to 0, negative 1, 0. So f dot n hat is going to be equal to negative 2xz. So phi 6 is going to be equal to the double integral z equals 0, x equals 0, 1, 1, negative 2xz dx dz. And you'll see here that no matter what these are, and I think they're both equal to 1, I'm going to get something and then the negative. So these are going to be opposite of each other. So phi 5 plus phi 6 is equal to 0. Okay, so now we can write down the whole flux. I and mean, that wasn't so bad, right? It wasn't too bad. So flux is going to be equal to 0. That's 5 and 6. And then I get, what was the first one? Phi 1 was 0 plus 0 plus 1 half. This minus 1 half bothered me because I got it before I got plus 1 half. I must have made a mistake here. So phi 3 z is equal to 0. That's right. Z, so I get negative, okay, that's right. This should be positive. Because uh, they were both, they both had a negative sign. So it's gonna be plus one, plus one half equals three halves. And so this is actually, there's two, there are two phi's right there. So that's the flux. Okay, so now we can go over to the other side. So I want to calculate the other side of this equation uh, right here but I need to take the divergence first. I did that already. No, I didn't. Okay, so let's find the divergence. Uh, del dot f, and that's going to be equal to, uh, here's my function, that's right there. Okay, so I get the partial with respect to x of x squared y plus the partial with respect to y of 2xz plus the partial with respect to z of z squared minus 2y. So that's going to be equal to, uh, this is going to, the partial of that with respect to x is going to be 2x, and then the y is there. This has no y term in it, so the partial with respect to y is 0. Uh, this, so plus 0. And this is going to be the partial with respect to z, I get plus 2z, and then that has no y term, so that's, that's just a zero. So I get 2xy plus 2z. Is that what I got? Yeah, that's right. Now I want to integrate that over the whole volume. So I'm going to go from x equals 0 to 1, y equals 0 to 1, z equals 0 to 1. And so it's a Cartesian coordinates and it's a Cartesian box. So that's, that's a pretty easy way to integrate this. I have 2xy plus 2z dx, dy, dz. So let's integrate the x, and I get the double integral. I'm just going to put y and z. We'll know the limits. And I get x squared y, and this one's going to be plus 2zx. And I have to evaluate that from 0 to 1, and have the dy, dz. So if I evaluate this at 1, I get y plus 2z. If I evaluate it at 0, I get 0. So this is going to be equal to the double integral of y plus 2z dy dz. Okay, so now I can integrate that with respect to y, and I get uh, y squared over 2 plus z squared evaluated from 0 to 1 dz. And so that's just going to be equal to, that one's going to be 1 half, and that one's going to be 1, oh wait, 
that's a two that's that's two two z y so it should be two z y i was into i was jumping ahead so that's going to be equal to uh the integral over z of one half plus two z dz and now i integrate that and i get uh, this is over z. I get one half z plus z squared from zero to one. That's going to be one half plus one equals three halves. So three halves equals three halves. So it worked. And I know that was a lot of work. And you know we can do spherical coordinates. And there's one surface or two surfaces. And and but I think even though it's a lot of work, it's good to see that it all works out in the end. Uh, so that's an example of a divergence theorem. And so I want to do the exact same problem in Python numerically. And one of the nice things about Python numerically is it, I mean it doesn't matter what surface I use; it should still work. And so I'll do multiple surfaces. But in Python, it's a little bit different and kind of fun. And so we'll do that in the next one.